started. If you all can please mute yourselves so that we don't have an echo, that would be great. This is our community meeting for the tra traffic signal and pedestrian improvements at the intersection of Forest Hill Drive and Royal Crest Drive in Council District 8. I'm Fanta Kaba and I am the City of Fort Worth project manager. The project engineers are Friesen Nichols. Before we get started, are there any representatives from Council District 8? Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So on our agenda today, we'll go over the project background and the location, the preliminary design, the project schedule, and the project contact information. So for the objectives of this project, they include improving intersection safety and capacity by constructing dedicated left turn lanes in all directions. So northbound, southbound, and eastbound. And then traffic signal replacement, improving pedestrian safety at the intersection by installing pedestrian signals and push buttons, improving pedestrian access elements, such as ADA compliant curb ramps, and also upgrading the signing and striping. And this project is funded by the 2022 bond program. And then here we have our location. So we're east of 35 and south of 20. So here is our proposed preliminary design. So again, we're proposing left exclusive left turn lanes on all approaches. So northbound, southbound, eastbound, and westbound. We're planning on widening the roadway and also adding sidewalks on the west side and along Royal Crest Drive. And again, upgrading the pavement markings and signage. For our project schedule, we're currently in the design phase. There is no right-of-way acquisition anticipated, and we are in communications with franchise utilities in regards to any potential conflicts. The timeline for construction estimated contract execution is summer of 2024, with construction starting in the fall of 2024, with a duration of about six months and a construction cost of about 1.4 million. For project contact information, we have our design engineer, Todd Buckingham. His number is 817-735-7517. Myself. You did not call me today. Don't say nothing. You want to be a Takaba, and my contact information is 817 392 8022. Download it on your phone. And then, if for any service requests, whether it's for this project or any other improvements that you wish to see or you want to report, we have multiple avenues for you to submit those. We have the My Forward app for Apple, we have the My Forward app for Google. You can also text hello to 817-835-MY-FORT-WORTH or 6939. You can call the city call center at 817-392-1234. And there's also a chat box on the City of Fort Worth website. And that concludes tonight's presentation. Thank you all. And it is now open for any questions. Um, I guess I do have a question in regards to that light there. Um, during the meantime of the construction with all the school traffic, how is that going to work out for the community? So as we get closer to construction, we will we'll have another meeting. This will be the pre-construction community meeting, and then we'll go over the conditions that you all can expect during construction.
So typically we've had an issue with flooding um, at that intersection and that first block of Royal Crest Drive. And I know that they worked with, uh, I know Catherine with City of Fort Worth has worked with the uh, Kalina Del Bosque uh, to help eliminate some of that. And that has been eliminated. So is this going to impact that in any way and cause that flooding to begin again? Todd, do you want to give uh, just an overview on the drainage conditions at the intersection? Sure, absolutely. So as you were talking about there, there is open channels or channels on either side of the roadway, the east and west side of Forest Hill Drive. Uh, we were working with the stormwater department at the city of Fort Worth uh, to make sure that the drainage conditions here are not modified and changed in any way. We do know that the drainage issues that you're talking about is something that it's been on the city of Fort Worth radar for a while now, and something that they're anticipating to help resolve um, in, a, in a larger scale, a long term, and a future project. Uh, but our the project here will not impact or not change the drainage patterns that uh, that were resolved recently there with the city. Okay, thank you. And you mentioned that it was there would be some street widening. I'm assuming you're speaking uh, on Forest Hill Drive only, correct? Yes, that's correct. On the east and west side of Forest Hill Drive. There are some reconstructions on Royal Crest Drive. You can see some gray colors here and there on either side there. Uh, but those are really reconstruction in place, not necessarily widening there. Okay, thank you. So my last question is, I just happened to get a postcard in the mail. So is there a place that we can go to sign up to get alerts as, as the date is getting closer? Cause we're really talking about a year out. So is there a place where we can go to sign up to get alerts uh, when new things are happening or when it's about to start or do we just strictly need to watch our mailbox? If you don't mind putting your contact information in the chat, we can make sure to notify you once we have a, a date finalized for the pre-construction community meeting. And then once construction is set to begin, we will also put door tags on, on doors within a specific radius just so that everyone is notified of the upcoming construction. Our resident Sandra's Dab Diva, do you want to ask your question? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to unraise my hand. I was the one asking them. Problem. Hi, I have a question. Um, we live not on Royal Crest, but on one of those entrances on the left side, those three little entrances. Um, when construction starts, uh, we have um, a dead end street. So if construction starts, what's gonna happen when construction's on our, on our side of the street? So again, when we have our pre-construction community meeting, we'll have, we'll be able to give specifics on what conditions to expect during construction. And then we'll make sure to, to highlight this area as well to give expectations for how to access this area during construction as well. Okay, sounds good. Um, we also put our uh, trash um, cans on the side of the street. Is that going to be an issue when construction starts or where are we going to put our trash cans for? So we have like that one street, that one way street into um, that middle section right there on the left side. And we, we have our trash cans there. We get our mail from there. Like, how is that going to work? Uh, 
we will take note of that and make sure that we can provide answers for that during our pre-construction meeting. Okay, thank you. Sure. I think we will still be providing access so that you can get the mail and also have the trash picked up. Uh, we will like have that element in our traffic control plan. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, there's a question from Vanda Sanders. Uh, it's, I think, just half written. Vanda, do you want to ask your question? Uh, yes, I would like to ask this question as far as uh, concerning the street widening. Okay, from Forestville Drive to Royal Crest, how far up Forestville Drive will this widening of the street take place for uh, towards north and south from Forestville? How far up would it uh, widen take place? Sorry, I couldn't hear your question. The audio was kind of low. Do you mind repeating, please? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, the question was, when they get ready to start to widen the Forest Hill Drive right here at uh, Royal Crest, how far up Forest Hill east and westbound will the widening of the street take place? So you're asking how much we're planning on widening the roadway, correct? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Todd, do you want to answer that? So, yeah, Fanta, I think he's asking for the distance um, on either side of Royal Crest Drive. How long will the widening take place? So what dist distance on either side of Royal Crest Drive? Yes, Chad and Fanta, I can help answer that. So along Royal Crest Drive from the center of the intersection of Forest Hill and Royal Crest, we are reconstructing about 100 feet in the east, down, in the east on the east side and the west side. And then along Forest Hill, I know this maybe wasn't a specific question, but along Forest Hill, we are going to be 300 feet to the north and 300 feet to the south. All right, thank you. So on that 100 feet on Royal Crest Drive, are you guys planning to make that a no parking zone? Because we do have an issue with parking on both sides of the street. Are we installing the no parking signs on a Royal Crest? Yes, especially on the um, west side, on the west side of Royal Crest. Yes, because we have a lot of parking, like in the in the evenings, it's kind of hard to get. It's like a one lane trying to get down through there because we have a lot of parking. So I'm just curious as to how that's going to work. I think we were restricting some parking on Royal Cross, but I'll have our engineer confirm that. Uh, Todd? Yes, so short of that, that's correct. So on the east side of the intersection along Forest, uh, along Royal Crest Drive, excuse me, uh, that does have signage for no parking uh, in, in that on that side. Uh, the west side currently does not have that signage. Uh, it would likely be appropriate to include that signage uh, for the last, you know, let's say 100 feet, 150 feet or so. Uh, but we would we'll want to confirm that with the transportation management group that Shweta was talking about. Uh, there at the city of Fort Worth and see if they agree with that as well. But we can take note of that and make sure that we review that with the city. Yeah, please do because it's when, like when the school lets out that uplift ascend or whatever that school is, the neighborhood gets blocked on 
both Royal Crest and Hannah Ranch with people parking there to pick up their uh, children. So on both sides of the street, we have an issue with the parking, just with residents parking, you know, but mm -hmm. when school lets out, it is a tremendous issue. And it's, it's almost dangerous trying to get down through there because it really makes it a very, very narrow one way. And whoever happens to get there first is, is determines the direction that your traffic is going to be able to flow. Sometimes we have to go down to, like I live on Royal Crest and sometimes I have to go down to Hannah Ranch to be able to turn in to get back over to Royal Crest. Mm. Oh yeah, that's great feedback. We'll find a, a review that internally with the city and make sure that we've got the best response to that with markings or signage there. I have one more question in the chat asking from um, if we are providing any exit for the dead end streets. Um, so Wanda, are those the streets that are not like apart from this intersection, Forest Hill and Royal Crest? So this project only plans on uh, improvements at this intersection. We won't be making any changes to the other streets as part of this project. Someone raising their hand, can you get back? Yes, I have a question. So we're not gonna add lanes to Forest Hill, like make it a two-way lane on both sides. Because with that school traffic, sometimes I'm waiting in traffic for thir over 30 minutes when I get home when school lets out. Just to drive like a mile or two down the road. Um, so currently, I think with this project, we are just adding the left hand lanes on Forest Hill, but um, I think it would be a part of a bigger project in future to uh, widen the Forest Hill to uh, four lanes. Okay, because down. Down further, there is a four, four lanes, but it goes down to two lanes. Right yes. there, and then just with the school traffic, it's kind of, it kind of gets crazy trying to get in and out, out. And just to go 1 or 2 miles, it takes you 30, 45 minutes, especially during the peak times. Yes, uh, and uh, our transportation management is aware of it and uh, they have it in their radar, but they were not exactly sure on what the timeline of that project would be. Uh, but I think that's in a planning stage right now. It's it's in their radar. Okay, and my second question is uh, on the light. Is it actually going to have an arrow for you to turn into the neighborhood? Because uh, with the school traffic, nobody wants to let you turn. So you're holding up a whole lane of traffic when you have to turn in. So you'll have a green arrow for the left hand lanes. Yes, you will. Okay, because right now it never turns for you to turn left or right, depending which way you're going. You just have to wait till someone's nice and let you go through. Um, I think you won't have that issue after this project's done. Okay. Okay. And what is the preliminary? Uh, what is the preliminary start and date for this project again? Anta, can you go on to the schedule slide, please? Sure. Thank so the you. project, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Anta, sorry. So the project is currently under design and we're planning on the estimated date for the contract execution for construction is next summer. So summer of 2024 with estimated start of construction, the fall of 2024. And we will be having a meeting after this. Once design is complete, we'll have the pre-construction community meeting, and then we'll provide you with the uh, updated dates for the construction there as well. Okay, so we're looking at possibly an estimate time of six months at the most with a permit.
Yes, that's the current estimate. If that changes between now and the pre construction meeting, we'll give that update then as well. Manta, we have one more question in the chat. Will the water meters be affected for the dead end streets? Um, our waters are on the edge of the street. So I don't anticipate any water meters to be affected as a part of this project. And um, even if it does, I think our contractor would be responsible to relocate it or adjust it to grade, uh, but it won't be impacting any water services to the residents. Does anyone else have any questions? We have one more question in the chat um, from Isaac. I live on the dead end street and struggle daily to get out. Will there be any type of signage? So I said, uh, can you mention which street you live on? Oh, Forest Hill. Um, have to check. Um, Or do you know which which location Isaac is mentioning? Exactly sure. I know Rural Crest, the east side, does have a dead end to it. I, you know, there are a few things that will be done with this project, specifically the phasing of the traffic signal, that will allow for left turns to happen all at the same time uh, in the east and westbound direction. There are some intersection improvements that are being made that will make that more of an efficient. Movement to get out of or off of Royal Crest onto Forest Hill. We talked about some signage improvements as well uh, that we're going to coordinate with the city of Fort Worth on the potential for the, the no parking signs there as well to make that safer. And yeah, our goal here is to make that a, a more efficient intersection so that people don't have the rear end collisions that you guys are seeing today and to allow for the uh, left turn movements to be clear, uh, more clear and uh, be, be safer and not be stuck in the traffic trying to go through the intersection as well. So uh, that, that safety improvement that Fonda was talking about earlier is a really important part to this. Don. I said, sure, we can meet personally with you. Can you drop in your email ID or can you email Fanta? Um, her, her, sorry, her contact information is here on the slide now. So if you could email her or call her, that would be great. Got one more question in the chat. Who is going to enforce the no parking? I think it will be the city enforcing the no parking. We'll have some no parking signs up there. Um, we already have some uh, as a part of this project, but we will be discussing if we need to have the no parking sign on west side of uh, the west street of Royal Crest, and uh, we'll let everyone know once we talk to our transportation management team. I have one more comment. Uh, currently, no one is enforcing the signs that are already posted. Um, 
let me check with our team to see what can be done i currently don't have an answer chat uh, do you know who we can reach out to for that Hey, Shweta, this is Chad. I'm sorry. I had technical difficulties. What, who are we trying to reach out to? I apologize. I lost connection for a minute. Someone to enforce the no parking signs. Will it be the police department that we need to reach out to? Yes, I believe that would be correct. Um, so, Robert, let us check with the police department and see if we could reach back to you to um, keep you posted on it. I do have another question um, in regards to this construction that's going to be made. Um, the question is, is this also another change that's being made because of the amount of traffic that is to be expected with all the new houses that are going to be built over here towards the back end of the Hannah Ranch community? Like, basically, are we expecting, is there more traffic going to be expected um, with the new homes that are being built? I am not sure about that project, um, but we can look into it. Kanda, uh, have you heard about this before? I'm not aware of that as well, but um, like Shreda mentioned earlier, it is in the city's master therefore plan to widen Forest Hill Drive. So that is something that will be, will help accommodate any future traffic growth in the area. So um, Fanta and Todd, what, a traffic analysis was done as part of this intersection improvement project, is that correct? So Chad, let me go ahead and jump in there real quick. So yeah. this project was initially initially identified by the 2022 bond program uh, before that Hannah Ranch development there on the west side of this intersection was considered or, or applied uh, for city approval. So the intersection, it, it was identified based on uh, community input and community requests and safety issues the city identified. So this project is, is not directly related to and, and, and it is not started because of the development there on Hannah Ranch. Uh, the Hannah Ranch development is planning for, well, I understand, is planning for other improvements to make it uh, more efficient to get to and from uh, the, the new development side, specifically a connection over to uh, Royce Brooks Boulevard as well. Uh, but this intersection specifically is based on other issues that were identified before the Hannah Ranch development and the new Hannah Ranch development construction started. So I do know that the North Central Texas Council of Governments, uh, they are doing a study to look at widening Forest Hill and Wichita streets. Um, I don't know when that's going to be finished, but they are doing a study to look at widening uh, those streets uh, because of all the development that's being done. Um, again, I think that would be a part of a future project, but um, we can have a more, like, like, I think we would have a better update for you once we are closer to construction uh, to see if there's any progress made on that new uh, or the complete widening of Forest Hill Drive. Santa, we have one more question. Um, sorry, two more questions in the chat. One is what committee to contact to get an exit from North End of Royal Crest and Arnold? Um, Vanda, I think you can, yeah. I think, yeah, this slide's good. You can request on either, like, 
uh, you can put in a request using either of an option shown on this slide here, using an app, my footpath app, or just texting hello to 817-835-6939, or you can call and city call center and they could direct you to the credit department for it. Uh, we have one more question. What type of improvements are going to be made on the creek that's next to my house? There's a lot of water flowing when it rains and the bridge and the guards are damaged. Um, Chad, do you want to make, sorry, Todd, do you want to um, give a brief on what kind of storm driven improvements we are doing here? Yes, so I think next to the house that you guys live at there to the south of that, as you said, there's a creek that runs east and west. And this project will not uh, widen the creek or make modifications to that creek in any way. Uh, the guardrails, or sorry, the culverts that are there will not be widened as well. Uh, but the guardrail that is on the east side of Forest Hill Drive, as you all know, is, is damaged. You can see on the exhibit here, the left side, there's a small dashed line showing a replacement of that guardrail for vehicular safety improvements. Uh, but there will not be any channel improvements or uh, head wall or culvert or channel um, widening in any way. For this project, uh, as, they mentioned, as we mentioned earlier, there's uh, future plans, uh, obviously, for this roadway to be widened uh, when the planning and the dollars are there for the city. So at that point, there may be some improvements, but this project specifically will not have channel improvements south of your property. Uh, I have a question in regards to um... The Han I think it's the Hanna Ranch entrance. It's the, you know how there's two entrance to the community of the Hanna Ranch community. It's the one on Royal Crest and then the one that's closer to the Uplift Ascend. Who, um, I'm not sure if in this project, I know y'all mentioned a lot about Royal Crest, but I'm kind of, as we're kind of speaking here, I'm kind of concerned about that entrance. Um, like, will there be any, is there any consideration of possibly putting a crosswalk there? Because I do actually have children that go to Uplift and they're having to utilize um, Forest Hill, um, the Forest Hill Drive. There's, the school's not letting them use these gates that are on the sides, you know, facing our community. They're making them go all the way around. So that, that entrance right there, for me as a parent, I would it would I would feel so much safer if there was actually a crosswalk there. Who can I maybe email um, to consider that? So the scope of this project is improvements at the intersection of Forest Hill and Royal Crest. However, you can use any of these options to put in that that request, and then it will be routed to the the department that can that can look into it. Thank you. Right, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay, this is my last question uh, for tonight. Uh, uh, I'm noticing that when you uh, here, when you guys get ready to start the construction. Uh, along Forest Hill Drive, up and down, where the pedestrians have to walk, have a, a walk at. Are they going to put uh, those barriers back up? Because I've noticed in the past, cars come through here and they've knocked down all the little barriers with the uh, wooden, uh, I guess the wooden stakes and the water that they had through there. So are they going to put those back up there for the pedestrians to walk up and down Forest Hill when the construction is uh, starting? We will have more details on the traffic control during the pre-construction community meeting. Okay. 
And Fonte, if you don't mind, I'll kind of elaborate on that too. Uh, we are we are reconstructing the sidewalk and having it placed further away from the edge of pavement as well to have more buffer room and space between the sidewalk and the edge of pavement. Uh, but currently, the the wooden bollards with the wire connecting uh, the those bollards together is not planned to be replaced. Uh, but the safer situation of offsetting that distance between the sidewalk and edge of pavement is planned to be included. Hi, I have one uh, last question too. So uh, we, we live um, in that dead end that we were talking about earlier, like going down that dead end. And if we're going from north to south, let's say we want to turn to our street, um, we struggle a lot because there's not a stop sign there. And it's after the, the uh, stoplight, after the traffic lights. And I'm noticing now, right now, our entrance, which is the middle entrance, um, is going to have to pass through two um, streets instead of one, which might be difficult because if there's this like traffic stop there, we're going to be stopping traffic from behind us on the north side. I'm just wondering like how that's going to work out for us that we have no other way to go into our home because we're, we live in that dead end street. Um, I really don't even know an answer. I don't even know if you guys would be able to answer that at all. Claudia, do you mind just verifying what address you are on Royal Crestor Forest Sale here? Yeah, so we live um, on 79, uh, like 13, 79, 79, I don't know what it is, like 17? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay, yeah, just so just south of Royal Crest, kind of a shared driveway through there. Yes, so it's that middle entrance okay. on the left side, and mm -hmm. you see where like where that's where it's gonna start. That's where the two lanes are gonna start. And let's say, for example, like hypothetically, there's school traffic. There's people going on both lanes, and we're coming from the north to the south, trying to go in. Uh, do you understand the struggle we're gonna have, and people pushing us from behind to turn into our drive-through? because there's nothing there for us to like have as a stop sign or I guess like a yield to turn into our street because of the traffic that's going to start coming up because now we have two lanes to go through instead of one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess yes, we can go that. all the way around Wichita and go through Everman, but that would be so such like a, such a big thing for us to do when our mm -hmm. entrance is we could just go from north to south coming from the north to the south, turning to on the left side to our street. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Yes, yeah, 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 I see specifically yeah, southbound making the turn into your driveway there. Uh, yes, we can, and, it, and the same thing can happen, could, like well, leaving our drive through that's when we're going to have, if we're going to turn left, let's say, for example, if I want to go to Burleson or Everman, and I'm leaving my house on that dead end street, and I turn to my left, I'm going to have to go through two lanes to turn to my left. It just for us on, on our side, it doesn't seem very like it doesn't seem very efficient for us. I know it's the city and they need to want to fix Royal Crest, but there's there's other residents around there and like us, for example, that live in that dead end street, like, that's going to be really difficult for us. Correct. So, well, one thing that I, I will say is, is kind of a benefit here is because we are adding a, a left turn lane. Uh, you will see efficiencies at the intersection where there will not be, and likely will not be as much queue or backup from the intersection conflicting with your driveway there. We're all allowed to split vehicles that are trying to turn left. Uh, currently, we know today that there are times when vehicles are trying to turn left and uh, that are on force to go in trying to go to Royal Crest. And they don't have, there's, and there's also through movements conflicting with that, so they can't make those left turn movements. So mm -hmm. that then, People are then waiting in the cycle of the signal longer, which makes that backup and queue longer, which is the big issue uh, the, from the efficiency side that we're trying to resolve. And what 
But what we're seeing is that when we add that that new turn line on Forest Hill, it decreases that queue length because we're able to make that more of an efficient intersection. So, but I do understand what you're talking about there on the southbound making the left turn movement into that shared driveway. Yeah. I guess my question is, who's going to be liable if we have an accident there because of that? Well, because because of that, like nobody's going to be liable except for us. Because that's our entrance. But the fact that I mean, that's why we're talking about this today, right? Just make sure that we have that in mind um, with this project that you guys are having go, like going on. And it's just something that us as a as this street, we, we live. There's five houses here on this street, and we just I'm, I'm, I might be over speaking for the uh, my side of the street, but it's really hard for all of us, like in general. And I think it might be a little bit harder. I just, I know there's probably nothing you can do for us, but if there's something you can implement, like an extra yield sign for us, or I don't know, maybe, I don't know what else you could you could do for in that case, just to keep that in mind for us, we'd appreciate that so, so much. Mm -hmm. No, you, you said it exactly. The, the goal of this meeting is to hear your feedback. You guys use this every day. <laughs> uh, we've visited the site uh, many times, but you guys see it every single day. So that feedback's helpful for us to keep, like I said, keep in mind and make sure that we're making the right uh, and the appropriate decision for everybody here. Uh, that that intersection is pretty tough being so close. The the shared driver you guys have is so close to Royal Crest. It makes that pretty challenging and and at times unsafe, as you mentioned there. So let us put our head together as a team and as a city to make sure that we can get the best solution there and make sure to follow up with you on that. Okay, thank you so, so much. Um, to follow up with that, how would you, do you, would you have to make another, was that gonna be on in that other meeting that you guys were talking about or how would that be in place? How, how would that work out? That, that would be one way. I, I do also know uh, another a member also put their email address in here. That would be a really helpful way to get feedback to you as well. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I, I wasn't paying attention. No, you're okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you could put your email address in the chat box, that would be really helpful. We can follow up with you that way. Okay, sounds perfect. And the, the only reason I'm, I'm asking this question is because us personally as a family, we've had accidents here where they hit us from behind. Um, and it especially started when they, we first had that signal light, when we first had that light traffic light on. And, and that's the only thing that we're worried about as uh, the neighbors and us I, I'm, I'm here. I'm, again, I'm talking on, on, on their behalf, but I'm pretty sure that they're on the same mind as me. It's a very different, dangerous um, entrance, especially now that you're going to have those two different lanes like on there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening to us. And I'll, I'll put that email on there. And if you could talk to uh, my neighbor that's also on here and me as well, um, that would give us a little bit more of assurance of that we're not forgot, we're not forgotten, and that. That we all are also important part of the forest Hill community. I completely agree with you there. I appreciate that. And I did have one more question for you as well. Uh, we were able to pull the crash data for this intersection as well. Um, and sometimes those are recorded really well. Other times it's not not so much. Uh, do you mind? Is there a certain time of day that's a specific uh, challenge for you to get into that point, or, or the the crashes or the near the crashes that you all have had? Is that so, been a certain time of day or a certain during a certain we, event? We had our accident. Uh, it was a Saturday afternoon. I remember very well. It's been a few years back, but it was a Saturday afternoon, maybe one or two o'clock. It, it wasn't even busy at all. So that's what I'm trying to let you know. Even if it's not like um, the te it's not like peak hours, it's dangerous. So now that we're ha adding in two more lanes that we have to turn into. Um, it's still going to have, like, it's going to just elevate the, the danger for us going into our lane on, into our street, our dead end street. So that's what I've noticed. I've also noticed there's accidents in the evenings. I've seen them before. I've seen plenty going on here, not, not in front of our address, but right where the traffic lights at, um, evening accidents I've seen often, um, I don't know if anybody else has seen other accidents at different times, but I'm pretty sure if if, if somebody would like to talk about that, they definitely you could tell about the different accidents that have been there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, uh, I guess peak hours, but also on non-peak hours. It just depends on on how people are, uh, I guess, driving if they're looking at their phones or. I mean, it just it depends. But that's what happened in our experience. 
Okay. No, I completely agree with you there. Sometimes there's situations where people you know, maybe aren't paying attention or they're not expecting someone to turn or they're just casually going through saying, oh, no, we'll be here. And maybe they're going faster, higher rate of speed, uh, maybe not aware. So I agree with you that there's there's multiple reasons mm -hmm. for that and, yeah, maybe not a exact trend there. So thank you for sharing your experience and the way that you've experienced the intersection. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, just before just before you guys get ready to end your meeting for tonight, uh, Frontier Drive is a uh, is a pivotal corridor for most of the federal homes uh, using uh, to head in the towards Brendan Blood Works to head towards the funeral home. I mean to the funeral the cemetery. So were the funeral homes or were they rerouting uh, the funerals due to the construction that is going to be right here at uh, uh, Royal Press and Forestier Drive? Uh, where they also have to, you know, deal with the project and construction that's going to be taking place here. Thank you for, for your question. I think that's a good point. That's something that we will need to make sure is included in the traffic control plan, just to make sure that you all still have access to those services during construction. Anyone else have questions? So we'll also have uh, this presentation uploaded to the project website with the recording of today's meeting. So if someone wants to reach out to us after the meeting, if they have any questions or concerns, I will have this presentation up with Fantas and Todd's information in it, and um, you can always reach out to us after the meeting too. Thank you, Fanta and Shweta. Appreciate it. Thank you all for joining yeah. our meeting today. Todd, have a good night.